Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. In this video, we're gonna wrap up by showing you how to have your chart using a logarithmic scale and diving into some of the scale options, allowing you to explore some of those options yourself. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so pretty much everything we've done so far has been in a linear scale, but let's say we wanted to display things logarithmically. Now it's very possible to do so, and in fact, if you ever use something like D3, we would have to modify the data before doing anything with it. Now what's great about this charting library is that we can do so without actually having to touch the data itself. So let's go ahead and actually get rid of this. I'm gonna leave the options object here, but it's going to remain empty. I'm also gonna get rid of this array of colors, but keep one of the colors of which I'm just gonna keep this blue, and I'm gonna actually make it into a background or a border color. Let's just do border color, okay? And now we can keep everything else in terms of our data sets and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and change the type though to line. Super cool, so we have a line, we have the data, and everything should be pretty good to produce a nice little line graph here. Now this is great. All the data points are actually like very logically represented here, but let's say for some reason we wanted to actually have this be a logarithmic graph here. Now we can do that by passing some things into our options. The first thing we need to do is have a scales object. We've seen scales before when we modified the ticks starting at zero. And now we need to specify the axis so we can say the y axis. And now from here, we need an array of objects and we just have one object in here. Now at this point, we can actually start defining some things like we can define the scale of which we can say it's a type of logarithmic. Make sure I didn't get rid of that extra Y. Okay, super cool. So let's go ahead and actually refresh this and see what happens now. Now you'll notice our chart looks quite a bit different. You know, we're no longer, you know, 10 is now at the very bottom here. And the distance between all of these points, for instance, the distance between 20 and 30 is now less than the distance between 10 and 20. So this is going to be using a logarithmic scale. In addition, if we wanna go ahead and specify the beginning and ending, we can say ticks. And ticks is going to be an object where we can give this a min. And now let's say a minimum of one. Let's do a maximum of let's say 60. And let's check this out. And now you can see something really interesting. The space below between one and 10 is really large. And the space as the numbers get higher up is crunched a little bit more. So as you can see, based on how you need to represent your data, uh, logarithmic scale is super easy to add in charts.js. I found it to be a much more logical approach than having to modify all the data and stuff like you do in D3. Obviously these are two different beasts, so you can't really compare them uh, that, that way. But I just, I like the way that they handle the scaling within chart.js. It's nice and easy. Super cool. So basically there are a ton, a ton of scale options. If you head to the chart, Dot JS documentation, you can really see just how many options we have from display before update, uh, where we get all these functions, where we're getting uh, callbacks when the chart and the data is ready, before build ticks, before data. We have access to a whole host of things that we can use at our disposal in case we want to be able to access this data at any given point. In addition, these options within scales will give us the options we really need to do pretty much anything with drawing our ticks, color, line white, any of these stuff, font color. Yeah, so this is where you're going to find all of your options here and you're definitely going to find lots of value of spending some time inside of this section of the documentation. Now, if there's anything in particular you wanna see from scales, please let me know. There is almost too much stuff to cover here, or too many very specific use cases. So if there's a use case you really wanna see, let me know and I'll hook it up in a video. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. I hope you're having fun with charts.js. It's definitely sort of blown my mind in terms of what's easily and quickly possible in a charting application. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.